Hello, hello, hello. I uh, no. I thought I suddenly thought I thought I thought that, but then I thought there's nothing else. Oh God, you've already cut. Hello, hello, hello. Oh. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hello, 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 and welcome to Amnesty International presents The Secret Policeman's Ball Unlocked. I'm Deborah Francis White, and tonight we're looking at the classic Monty Python sketch, The Four Yorkshire Men, or is it The Four Yorkshire Women? Well, we will be in a Q&A with the wonderful Siobhan McSweeney, who you will know and love as Sister Michael from Derry Girls, and the magnificent Juliet Stevenson. But first, a message from Amnesty International and me. We wanted to start by saying, we will not be silent on the structural racism and white supremacy that fueled the murder of George Floyd, George Floyd, Ahmad Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and many, many more people in the United States and the rest of the world. We stand in solidarity with organizers and activists and join the call for immediate change to stop unlawful killings of black people and for those responsible to be held accountable. We will take a stand against white supremacy and racism. And I wanted to say personally that the origin of the name, The Secret Policeman's Ball, is about uh, people in democracies who are human rights defenders, satirists, saying to people in police states, hey, we can see you. And we know that mm -hmm. your secret policemen do not identify themselves because they are not on the side of justice. But as the events of the last few weeks have brought into sharp reality, yet again, being in a democracy does not mean that your police are not brutal and unlawful. So the name of the show has particular significance tonight. It is a legacy show, but it's something that we should keep in mind. Now, some of you are watching on Facebook, some of you are watching on Twitter, and some of you are watching on YouTube, but you can only ask questions or give comments on Facebook. Uh, if you go to Amnesty UK, if you would like to ask Siobhan uh, or Juliet a question, you absolutely can. But first now, roll the VT. Amnesty's Secret Policeman's Ball was established in 1976 and it raised funds and awareness for human rights. This is your nine o'clock alarm call! 44 years later and 11 balls later, these events are now the stuff of legend. Good guy. Famous for bringing together unique combinations of performers and reimagined comedy sketches. They have been central to building the world's most powerful and inclusive human rights movement, if we do say so ourselves. Now more than ever, we need to come together and recognise our collective power to promote and protect human rights. So Amnesty have kindly opened up their comedy archives for me. Step with me into the Narnia wardrobe. And we ask if at all possible, and it is possible, that you join or donate or at least amplify our wonderful Amnesty movement by visiting the website and the links appearing at the bottom of the screen. Or if you're watching on Facebook, just click the donate button. Come on, that money that you're not using now, you're not going down the pub. Give it to human rights. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Secret Policeman's Ball Unlocked. Welcome to my very special guests, the wonderful Juliet Stevenson. Hello. And the magnificent Siobhan McSweeney. Hello, hello. Today we're talking about the legendary Four Yorkshire Men, or is it Four Yorkshire Women sketch? Luxury. <laughs> we just have to get out the lake at 3 a.m., clean the lake, <laughs> eat a handful of hot gravel, work 20 hours a day at Mel for twopence a month, come home, and Dad would beat us about the head and neck with a broken bottle if we were looking. Now, was this a beloved sketch of yours? Did is, Was this a sketch you knew and loved? 
It was it was a sketch I knew um, because I was a drama student when it first came out. And so I do rem have a dim memory of it. I admired it, but it wasn't entirely my bag. And what's so interesting is, I think, looking back now, why, you know, mm. um, it, 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 there was something about the all maleness of, of those um, comedy groups, which part of me found funny, what well, their material funny, but part of me always felt excluded. I don't think I realized that at the time, but looking back, I now think I do understand why I felt, oh, my brothers are laughing a lot. You know, my, everybody in my family is laughing a lot. What's the matter with me? Mm, interesting. So, uh, so when you got the call to perform in it, did that flip it in your mind? Well, of course, because it came from you and Amnesty, I thought, you know, 40 years on, I thought this would be really interesting. I mean, because I, I, I love flipping per se. I just think flipping gender stuff is just almost always interesting because when you flip, you immediately, it's really simple, it's an immediate sort of, you know, recipe for looking at gender divides or differences. And then when you talked about rewriting it, then I got very excited. It shows really what good bones the sketch has, that it can hold so many different uh, meanings and ideologies and 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 the the focus of the punchline and the focus of the joke that actually the the structure of it internally is so strong that you can bring it from 1976 to 2001 to 2018 2019 and bring the old audience with you and create a new audience i mean that's that's quite an achievement for any piece of writing well, I'm a feminist, but I loved this sketch as a child. Uh, I I did not, I didn't mind at all uh, that Monty Python was an all male group. I mean, looking back now, I understand uh, context and and uh, a sense of that women being excluded off the telly, and uh, I would see it different contextually. But at the time, I loved this sketch. What's wonderful about this sketch is is not whether it's to do with people from Yorkshire or whether it's to do with poverty or any of those things. It's to do with that moment among friends when some, someone puts something on the table and uh, then somebody else sees a moment to outdo them. This brings us to the original Secret Policeman's Ball version. So this is the first time it was performed live at the Secret Policeman's Ball. And it was a who's who of comedy icons, John Cleese, Terry Jones, Michael Palin, and Rowan Atkinson. Aye, we can't beat a good glass of Chateau de Chasselet, eh, Josiah? <laughs> hey, hey, right there, Obadiah. Hey. Who'd have thought 40 years ago we'd be sitting here drinking Chateau de Chasselet? Aye. <laughs> In them days, we was glad to have the price of a cup of tea. Aye, a cup of cold tea. Well, that milk, more sugar, or tea. <laughs> In a cracked cup and all. We never had a cup. We used to drink out of a rolled up newspaper. <laughs> what do you think of that? The first time it was ever performed at the Secret Policeman's Ball. It was already loved because of uh, at last the 1948 show and the Pythons who'd taken it on tour. What did you think of seeing it there at the Secret Policeman's Ball? Uh, they were a great troupe. You could really see they were relaxed and it was well, yeah, it was well done. Very funny. Yeah, I thought they were performing it brilliantly too. I mean, they're all, as you said, they're brilliantly comic uh, individually those guys but actually they are playing it brilliantly together and they've absolutely got the rhythm shall we go to 2001 and we'll see now in a secret policeman's ball titled we know where you live live uh, a version with eddie izzard harry enfield vic reeves and alan rickman hi but you know we were happy in them days weren't we <laughs> Even though we were t poor. <laughs> because we were poor. Right. My old dad used to say to me, money cannot buy you a nuclear radar system. <laughs> you know, we used to live in a, in a tiny little tumble down old house with holes in truth. <laughs> a house? You were lucky to have a house. Aye. We used to live in one room, 26 of us. No furniture and half the floor was missing. You were lucky to have a room. We used to live in t the corridor. <laughs> oh, we used to dream of living in a corridor. <laughs> 
reminded me of church, that version of the sketch, because the audience know when to shout hallelujah. So the sketch is by this point so well known, but everyone in the audience remembers it. And so the joke is uh, twofold. It's art imitating life. Now, we can't just say the line they know without a bit of a twist occasionally to freshen it. So individually, I'm going to Harry Enfield try and make you, Eddie Izzard, laugh because you don't know how I'm going to twist this. So there's, so there's the Yorkshiremen trying to outdo each other. And then there's the comedians who are known and loved trying to outdo each other. And I think that's why the audience are enjoying it so much. There are more laughs though, but the laughs are different. It's a laugh of recognition. It's a, it's a laugh of, uh, of um, communality, you know, like, uh, oh, my bit's coming up. You're going to do my bit now. And oh, and I'm laughing out of, not that I'm finding it funny, but out of delight, really. It's not sort of like the first one where it's like, oh, this is hilarious. This is more like, oh, I'm delighted. Look at us all laughing over the same thing. It's a, a different quality to it. The difference between 2001 and 2018, when we first did this in Edinburgh, is vast. There's lots of people there that were one year old in 2001 and are now 17 year old and in the audience of the Edinburgh Festival don't even know this sketch. So uh, mm. you were very, very keen, Juliet, to play this extremely truthfully the first time we did it. Let's hear a clip of the four Yorkshire women sketch uh, from the Secret Policeman's tour in 2019. And uh, this is a clip that combines both your contributions. Let's listen. We used to get up in the morning at half past 10 at night, half an hour before we'd gone to bed. <laughs> Eat a lump of low carb, sugar free, weight watchers, own brand poison. <laughs> work 29 hours a day at mill for a half penny a lifetime. Come on, and each night the patriarchy would come, slit our throats with a shard from the glass ceiling. <laughs> and bury us in historical obscurity. <laughs> Lucky. We lived for three months in the gender pay gap. <laughs> and every morning we'd have to get up at six, clean out the gap, eat a crust of stale bread, then we'd have to work 14 hours at mill day in day out for half the wages the men were getting and they were on unpaid internships. <laughs> So Juliet, when we asked you to get involved, your daughter, Rosalind Brodie, who's an absolutely brilliant director and has now, I would say both sadly and brilliantly left the theatre to go and work for the NHS. Uh, God bless her, we need her. But she is a very, very brilliant director and writer and she gave this a gender pass. So some of the jokes that you heard in there, like we had to live in the gender pay gap for two years or um, it would, would slit our throats with a, with a shard from the glass ceiling. Uh, really, really landed with the audience. They absolutely loved them. Um, how was this for you, Juliet, first, because you did the very first version of it for the Secret Policeman's tour, uh, to approach it in a different gendered way? I think we just talked about, let's try and get a rhythm going. I think we all agreed there was a need for a rhythm. Beyond that, we didn't really sort of talk about the psychology of the characters very much. Um, I think the sort of unspoken thing was, you know, we'll learn how to play this when we get out there. And in fact, on a night like that, when you've got this kind of amazing audience who are just, you know, their hearts are full, they want to have a brilliant time. They, you know, they pretty much love everybody there. And so it's, it's a winner, really. So we went out there and it really came together out there on the stage. We, we, I don't think we had any sense that we had kind of over rehearsed it, let's say. There was no danger of that. <laughs> sure. I do remember, though, you taking quite a lot of control of the rehearsal process and others in the group then yes anding that i i was blown away by how connected you were in rehearsal and how much of a similar language you shared and how everybody agreed we absolutely play the truth of this and we do not play out to them and i yeah. remember thinking oh i hope that works because it sounded like you were going to play it like a subtle piece of chekhov and it's this big <laughs> famous over the top classic sketch and 
my God, did it work? And it, it worked partly because a lot of the young people had never seen that sketch before and a lot of older people hadn't seen it for years. I was very nervous about my accent. Um, I <laughs> was worried that it may not be convincing. Um, so the <laughs> there was a moment where, where Rosie just sort of stopped after a particularly uh, ear bleeding, destroying of some dreadful up oh, north accent that I'd done and sort of looked at us and we all and she went are, are you actually from Yorkshire? <laughs> that is my favourite moment I think from any of the four Yorkshire women. Juliet anything any lines or moments that stand out for you? There's a gorgeous little little moment though which we haven't seen today when when someone says well we are, you were lucky to have a whatever it is we are, all we had was a, a box of Tampax in the middle of the road and then there's a pause and somebody says super plus <laughs> and um, the idea that, you know, the size of the Tampax that you insert in your vagina might indicate that it was a slightly bigger box. <laughs> of course, it's probably not true. You know, the box is probably a standard size. But the idea and then the, the joy, I mean, I'm, I'm way older than you guys. I'm, you know, in, in my early 60s, I'm 63. You know, the, the idea that we could be on a stage making jokes about, you know, standard super or super plus tampons that you insert in your fat is such a joy i cannot tell you what a joy that is you know wow that, 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 that line that one word super plus in relation to a tampon can bring the house down is is you know i'm old enough now to appreciate it's it's taken me 40 years to get to that point it's just so blissful now where women's comedy has gone you're both amnesty supporters what is it about amnesty international and the secret policeman's ball heritage that draws you in to want to do this. I know you're asked to do a lot of different things. What makes you want to come here and give your time to this? I mean, you know, why do we need oxygen? I mean, we, we there couldn't be a more important time to need an organisation with the status and the gravitas and the seriousness and the sort of moral weight of amnesty at a time, you know, when we're seeing human rights um, you know, destroyed, undermined all over the world. What I particularly love about Amnesty is that they knew from a very early time that if you have a platform, you have a voice. And if you have a voice, you have an obligation. To shine a light, we have an obligation to do what we can. And mm. Amnesty are, are brilliant for that. One thing that really draws me to be the creative director of the Secret Policeman events in the 21st century is how much artists are censored around the world and how much we can stand in solidarity with them and draw attention to that because a lot of the time the people Amnesty are trying to get out of jail are people who have spoken up. And can I ask you a question? It's not a competition, it's not, but Desert Island Discs, you can only take one Amnesty International Secret Policeman's event uh, for Yorkshire men or for Yorkshire women sketch with you to that desert island, which do you take? Ah, in the spirit of female solidarity, I will obviously pick my own. <laughs> this pandemic we're all in is a human rights crisis in the most immediate sense. And Amnesty International UK are campaigning to protect everyone through this. If you'd like to support us, and you know you would, please visit amnesty.org.uk forward slash join hyphen unlocked or amnesty.org.uk forward slash donate hyphen unlocked. Or if you're on Facebook, you can click that donate button right now to help build a world we want to live in together. Yeah, it is. It's I'll be back here this Wednesday at the same time, 7.30 p.m. on Facebook, joined by the wonderful Mira Sayal, Sanjeev Bhaskar, Kulvinder Gear, Nina Wadia and Nish Kumar. And you can also watch the full-length ball, We Know Where You Live Live, 7.30 p.m. this Friday, 5th of June. Hello, I'm back here with Siobhan McSweeney and Juliet Stevenson live. Hello. 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 This is how we make television now, guys. We're, we're all <laughs> plugged in at home. 
um, just winging it away, hoping nobody freezes. Uh, so, so first of all, thank you for joining us. Secondly, just before we go on, I want to acknowledge the original writers and creators of this sketch. The Four Yorkshiremen was originally written for the 1967 show, which was called At Last... The 1948 show, which was a joke about how long it took the BBC to commission anything. And that's, that's changed loads, hasn't it, guys? Um, yeah. No, it hasn't. Um, <laughs> so it was written by the four performers who originally did it. This is pre-Python. People think it's Python, but it's really pre-Python. Um, John Cleese, Graham Chapman, Marty Feldman, and the wonderful Tim Brooke Taylor, who sadly died of COVID-19 in April. So we send our, our great rest in powers to him. What, a, what an incredible performer and one of the originators and creators of this sketch. Um, so we want to thank all the writers and performers and to show a particular respect to those who've sadly passed away. Um, so let's see if we can get some questions coming in. Firstly, uh, while I'm waiting for a question, Siobhan and Juliet, how was that to watch back did anything else occur to you i mean oh sorry just quickly how how um maybe is it true do you think do you think it's true that the test of a really great sketch is that it will can can move from you know one era to the next to the next and, and resonate differently every time it just struck me so much that that's the case i thought it's so fun hearing our version the kind of women's version the gendered version um sort of so many years you know 40 years later or whatever and then thinking you know what will it what will this sketch i'm trying to imagine what the sketch will be in another 40 years time you know it'll be so fun or even yeah. another 10 years time it'll just be so this this sketch will will you know presumably go on and on and on it'll just be so great to see how it morphs you know from one era to another and people rewrite it and twiddle with it accordingly yeah and okay, it, 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 it does evolve go on sean it does it, it it does evolve as i said in the in the vt it has good bones and any good writing can sort of change to you know not comparing it to shakespeare but people drag that out for whatever stuff is happening uh, at the time and it can adapt any good piece of writing can sort of that it's in um i must admit when i saw the vt uh i thought uh look at all those people beside each other uh, mm. sharing a table and sitting in a theatre sitting in Wembley mm. and my heart ached watching that mm. and I mm. think that uh, regard even though we know all these sketches from television all those performers uh, including the three you see in front of you now uh, we all have our roots in live performance and mm. the idea, the, the only reason it's live is because you have people in a room breathing the same air and living with you. And it really broke my heart thinking about that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. We have yeah. a question from a viewer, um, which is, what sketch do you have in your sites next? If we are luckily allowed out and allowed to assemble again, and we're allowed to do another secret policeman <laughs> event, what would you like to take on? Any classics or any, any favourite little ones that you've got that you love? No, I'm... Hello, can you hear me? I can, yes. All oh, right, no, the, the, the sound sounded a bit different there. Apologies for that. Uh, no, I am a, an unimaginative meat puppet. I am happy to do whatever I am told to do because uh, with... With good writing, you'll always make it funny. I would love to. Well, I, I'd love to um, see what we could do with a dead parrot sketch from Monty Python. Oh, because yes, dead, of course. Do you remember the dead parrot sketch? You know, where the guy buys a parrot from a pet shop and he goes back in and, and, and it's dead and he goes back in and um, the pet shop guy can't apparently see the problem even though the parrot is lying mm -hmm. on the bottom of the cage legs in the air in rigor mortis situation and it's all about language so that the guy is trying to say you know the whole thing about it's a late parrot and it's it's an ex parrot the whole thing about language mm -hmm. and which would which would sort of i'd love to see how that would work now with the whole thing of spin you know and people mm -hmm. now. using language to I'm deny realities it's, that's exactly what i thought i thought it's very it's quite orwellian it's like when the government says no, it isn't. It's like that sketch in um, that moment in 30 Rock 
where the, the they're in a government building and the roof is leaking and someone says leaking and he says no we've looked into it it's not and it's like literally yeah. dripping <laughs> on him and it's like that's yeah, what the dead yeah, parrot yeah, stitch says yeah. about you know in terms of the satire of human rights i've got another question coming in what a pandemic version of this sketch look like oh of of the four yorkshire yeah. men what would a pandemic version of the four yorkshire men or women look like to you I think it's post lockdown where, um, you know, while I was living with, uh, I was living with four flatmates. I didn't like any of them. Flatmates, you were looking. Oh, I was sequestered you were alone. Looking. Oh, I was stuck in an all by myself with no toilet paper <laughs> because they'd all bought it up. <laughs> or alternatively, <laughs> you know, what? I'm haunted. I'm very haunted by the competitiveness of lockdown. So people, if I see mm. one more, you know, post saying I've learned Chinese, I've, you know, I've written my novel, <laughs> I've, I've, and I'm thinking, oh, I haven't done anything. I've sowed a few carrot seeds, and um, I, I can't think what I've done. I, I've read a couple of books. I haven't written any. You know, the, I think the whole competitiveness mm. of lockdown and what you've achieved and what lockdown has and how it's changed your life and how you're a completely different person. You're thinking, yeah, I've just got. got, got I put on a stone and I've got a few more spots. I can't really think what other <laughs> achievements I've got. So I think you can have that. Oh, you were not there. Yeah, you were. You're, you're. That's his own achievement. Oh, it's rife, isn't it, lockdown? For what uh, what you achieved yeah. or what you didn't achieve or who you were with or how hard it was for you. Uh, Either how uh, hard it was or how, or, how, or how you spun it into something, you know, extraordinary and life-changing. Yeah, um, completely, what, what completely. You did. We, have to make, we have to make art out of everything. Today is officially the first day that I'm technically allowed out as somebody who's shielding. And today was the worst day in 11 weeks, 10 weeks of lockdown for me. Because what? of the whole, like, oh, I can go out now. Oh, damn it, I can't be relying on the excuses. Go, oh, you're lucky. You're lucky. Are you there? Mm. You're there. You can go out. You and can, can have your social go out. You can go out, but should you? That's my question. I'm just going to get in oh, another question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For the performers, was there? A, did it feel like a lot of pressure recreating such a famous sketch on stage? Okay, so this is one for you, yes. for you two. Uh, not for me, who did the links on the night. Uh, was there a lot of pressure performing such a classic, beloved sketch? Uh, that's a question from the viewer, but I'm going to add in also when they did the female Ghostbusters, everyone said it ruined it. Not everyone. Hashtag not all men. Some men said it had ruined their childhood. Was there any concern for you? Were you like, oh, God, why are we doing this? Are we taking this on? Did you feel it just as a performer of the weight of the four Yorkshire legacy? Uh, let's not screw this up. But did you also feel it in terms of, of uh, are you going to get complaints? I, I personally I didn't have any worries about that only because I like I really like the idea of taking a sacred cow and you know and messing with it a bit and especially if you're doing the gender flip you know I think you know they yeah it's really famous and it's 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 one it's you know colors as a sketch and it's a brilliant piece of comedy writing but it, hey it's so time that we took possession of this stuff and said okay guys but you know have a look at it this way around I I didn't really I think uh, iconoclasm is is really good fun you know like yeah. smashing up smashing something up actually and it's always it's always going to be out there isn't it everybody can go back and tune into their youtube clip of the original if they want to it's like changing mm -hmm. shakespeare they go oh, calm down when people get upset about changing shakespeare they go oh, calm down it's still going to be there but let's see what mm -hmm. happens if you put it on you know set it in yeah a, you know, unfortunately or something. unfortunately they did burn the negatives of the original ghostbusters so no one can ever watch it again and that's the thing what everyone was so upset about um it's gone it's just it was very upsetting i i personally was upset watching the female ghostbusters uh i mean I, you know what did it contribute to my childhood memories that i make up it's hoovered them out uh let's take another question present company accepted who would be your dream cast for this sketch present no company opinion. accepted who's your dream cast for this sketch we've had it from a viewer oh so you're not allowed to say well, Deb, anybody what, on this call. What about, well, Deb, what would be your dream? What would be your dream at cast? Oh, oh, well, um, if we could do it again, um, I'd love to have Mira Sayal having mm -hmm. a go. Uh, I was thinking of uh, Sindhu. Has Sindhu done it? At Sindhu. Uh, I, th I think, I don't think Cindy did it. She did Going for an English, which we're talking about on Wednesday night. But I think she balked at the accent slightly. The thing is, you've, you've got to be able me. to do a Yorkshire. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I think Cinder sees herself as a comic more than an actress, although she acted in my film brilliantly. So, you know. Uh, <laughs> yes, she did. Yeah. Uh, yes, she did. She I did. loved Rosie what about Jones, Deborah but she was oh. from Yorkshire. What were you? Sorry, Juliet. Susie Ruffell, Susie Ruffell, Deborah Francis White, Sarah Pascoe. These, yes. are, these are the girls who make me laugh at the moment. Who else? Let's, yes. let's, who's the fourth one going to be? Oh, sorry. It's just that the sun is coming, pouring in now. Never mind. Yeah, um, Julia's been asked to move into the light because it looks a lot like she's in one of those videos where she's uh, on a witness relocation program and she's not allowed to, allow <laughs> to show her identity at the moment. Um, and it's like we should whereas be sorting her as, voice. Really. Whereas I look as if I'm about to give Mulder and Scully a deep, dark secret. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, all kind of different, different times of day. Hold on. Yes, um, it's true. It better? <laughs> That's so that much be. better. Oh, Ashley so B. much better. Yeah, so that would be good. That'd be a good lineup. Deborah. She, she, yeah. she, Sarah she was in the original. B. I can't Susan do a Ruffin. Yorkshire accent. I have to work very, very hard at doing a Yorkshire accent. I don't think um, we have to worry accents. about the Yorkshire accent. Fuck accents. Yeah. What are accents? I. We were all terrible. Yeah. Adjua Ando is a yeah. genius with voices. She did all the voices in my book of everyone I interviewed. And she is genuinely one of the most brilliant voice artists of our time, but also one of the most brilliant actresses as well. So Adjo Ando with French and Saunders, I would I'd be Jess up for Regan that. Jess Regan is amazing. <laughs> and Mira Sayal. That's, my, that's probably my dream team. Jess Regan would be phenomenal. She's really Jessica good Regan. at accents. Yeah. She really yeah. is. Uh, Tom Selinski, do you have another question for us? I'm kind of running out. One serious one to finish on if you want. Yeah, go on. Um, this is how we make television now. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing this in my ear, like I can hear it, but I have to actually take it out. Normally the producer's talking to you in your ear and that's why you do that, but I'm taking it out so I can hear Tom Selinski in the room. These are the high production <laughs> values we live with during lockdown. Or Tom, make one up. Seriously, he's, uh, he's there's scrolling. There's a question which I can't find now, but it was about... Um, there's a question here that, that is, I'm a feminist uh, boss. What are practical things that people can do Okay, thank you. Uh, what's your question, Siobhan, that you can see? I can see a question that is uh, continuing your, your guilty fan thing of I'm a feminist but, and uh, it's not necessarily with the thing, but I was wondering if there's a, a latest, I'm, I'm, I don't know why I'm asking, I don't have one either, but is there something oh, particularly I see. My, about? My, my, my new I'm a feminist but is I'm a feminist but I truly believe the first Thursday after lockdown, we will come out into the streets and applaud the waxers. <laughs> the, the, the hairdressers will be like, they will be first responders. They'll be like key, key workers. Key workers. Key I mean, workers. There's, look, there's, there's things no. coming into my hair. I don't understand what's happening with my hair at the moment. So no. I'm just saying no. I'd like to be smooth and I'd like to have highlights. <laughs> um, so I've just had a question in. This is a, this is a more serious question, change of gear. Um, that given the situation in America at the moment, as far as human rights go, is there anything uh, that uh, our, uh, Julia as an Amnesty ambassador, Siobhan as mm. someone who's done a lot with Amnesty in the past, that you would recommend we do to step up and help? I would just well, say everybody out there. Oh, sorry. No, go. No, uh, well, I, I think basically all, all I can say um, Ooh, I've lost Siobhan sound. Is that as a, as a white person, there's right. this, this uh, push and pull between feeling utterly horrendous and not wanting to add to hurt and not feeling that there's some sort of respect, that you're being respectful when you don't engage, uh, that you recognize, you try to give the space over to other, uh, to, to, to people of color. And from what I can figure out, from what I've read, from what I've listened to, is that that's not necessarily true. The respect always needs to be there. But actually, as a white person, I have a responsibility to speak up in support because of my privilege, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That my instinct of shame, let's call, let's call a, a, a spade a shovel, which is, <laughs> which is what's happening here. I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. I'm utterly ashamed. Um, and I'm hurt and I want to help. 
but I don't want to feel that I am loudly proclaiming how well I'm helping and whatever. I, I want to truly help. And I know that the instinct is to be quiet, to give the space over. And I think that what we need to do is actually listen to our friends and family who are of colour and and, lead, and take their lead and do what they uh, recommend us to do. We need to read, we need to listen, we need to learn. And personally, and perhaps collectively, I don't know about the rest of you, I need to do something with the shame, I feel. I need to, I need to, it's not useful, uh, it's not right, and it's not important. So I need to get rid of it. So that's the most honest I can be, frankly. Thank you, Siobhan. Uh, Juliet? I think as I, as I, you know, that I'm just urging all of us to become active. Activism is the only way forward. It's astonishing after so many examples of police brutality, white police brutality to the black population in the United States and in this country as well, let's, rem let's remember, you know, that it's no longer uh, left to that community to fight for themselves. It is an international issue. And I hope that all of humanity comes forward on this one. And I would just urge everyone as always to, if, if you know, millions of people must be sitting around the world seeing this horrendous event and what it means. And it's happening at a time when those who are governing us, I mean, happening, the unique thing about this, this, this historical moment, I think is that we have, you know, America has a, as a president in power who is himself so overtly racist, you know, slash white supremacist that they have not got the support of Washington necessarily in this. And so it has to be a popular movement. And actually historically, change has only happened from the ground, I think. You know. So I would say, join, join, and join Amnesty because Amnesty is, you know, it's, it's, it's very important that people I think understand that Amnesty is no longer just about politi political prisoners that it used to be. Amnesty are, are, are fighting for these human rights issues in all forms all over the planet, all over the, the world. And it's it's a, it's a you know join amnesty or join something but but join up and let's all make our voices heard. Yeah, um, I agree. And I and let this momentum I, let this momentum move. You know, let this momentum not stop. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. And becoming more active in amnesty, with amnesty for me has helped me so much because whenever I'm feeling desperate about something, amnesty is posting about it. Amnesty has amnesty is taking mm. an action, and I feel like I'm part of a, mm. an army or in a tribe that is, is doing, they, they make it easy for me to know what to do. And sometimes, yeah. uh, often, they draw my attention to something I didn't know I should know about. But I can yeah. add my voice uh, to embarrass the yeah. government, to, to, you know, I think oh, it's only me. I'm just a, this little thing, where it's, you know, like, oh, what, what, what noise can I make? But actually, no, you're part of a huge choir if you join Amnesty International. Mm. And this is not mm. me, yeah. like, plugging my brand. This is genuinely... And there are other great things you can join as well. As, as Juliet said, join something. But I find Amnesty very, very useful for that um, because, mm. you know, it's an army and it, and it's, it's it's something we need right now. Um, but, but donate, also donate, donate. It's a, donate. Place, it's also donate. a place where you don't... Like, the, the, the continuous cry is... You know, even when it comes to demos, I continuously get, well, I didn't know, I didn't know. The thing about joining Amnesty is that you will know, you will know. You, they are your portal. Them. Them. You, you don't they social are media your portal, your doorway. Sign up and they'll email you. Um, but yes, uh, and donate. And if you don't have any money because of either lockdown or, or just in general, that's okay. If you share, somebody who might have, you know, still have a full-time job and they're, now they're not going down the pub, but might donate all of that money. Um, send it to somebody you know who has more money than you directly and ask them to help. Um, and also there's uh, a lot uh, you can Tom, do that isn't just one? about money. Sorry. But there yes, are, absolutely. you know, the, the, organize, the organizers of the movement in America are fantastic. There's been fantastic clarity about what you can do, who you can email, who you can write to, what you can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not obviously just about donating. It's about just, you know, even an email, a letter, uh, just deciding... Mm -hmm. You know, or sharing. There's, there's there's a lot you can do. Or get, or, you know, when we're allowed to, let's get out there and and uh, and come together over this. 
indeed. And if you are protesting, there's plenty of protests coming up, but please social distance, uh, because I'll tell you, if COVID-19 needed an ally, it, that ally is white supremacy, uh, because you cannot have a revolution in a socially distanced manner. Um, and so it, the, the, the more that if, if it's not your oppression, the more that you respect those distances uh, in your support and allyship, the better. Um, Tom, can we have one last question, please? Yes. What has been your most positive experience during lockdown? Okay, so one last question is, what has been your most positive experience during lockdown? Um, this would have to be up there for me. Um, this has been lovely and I'm really, and I loved doing the video with going for an English, uh, the, the going for an English crew uh, from goodness gracious me and Nish Kimar. So I'm very, very excited about Wednesday. That was great because it was a reunion of people who hadn't been back in the same room. Um, and I use room metaphorically, I mean on the same Zoom uh, for a while. So that was really, really exciting for me. Siobhan? Um, it sounds, I, I leant over to my windowsill and grabbed this. Now, I grew this from seed. Yes. Wow. Yes, don't I? Yes, thank you. Stop intimidating <laughs> Julia with your gardening. She just said she's feeling it. Is it a tomato plant? I can't, is it marijuana or tomato? I can't see. Oh, oh who tomato, knows? Is it? It's tomato. <laughs> oh, hopefully. We're live because for Amnesty. It's not marijuana. Oh, sorry. sorry. Sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> it's definitely tomato uh, but the thing is, is that they, these seeds were given to me by a friend that i know from home who posted over a big huge jiffy bag of seeds for me it's really i've like got the most wonderful seedlings i'm killing them all this is the poor little fella that seems to be surviving god bless him um, and I think it's not so much the seed, it's the fact that somebody thought to, it, it put time into giving me some seeds, checking up on me, knowing that I think our innate kindnesses are stronger than our innate hatreds. That's been a positive for me. Juliet, your most positive experience. I, I agree. I think the. The, I think the re-emergence of kindness, uh, you know, I think um, lots and lots of positives in a way. I, I have loved the quietness. I've loved the stopping. I've, yeah. I've loved looking up at skies empty of aeroplanes and having us. I loved all the stories coming in from all over the world about what that's meant for wildlife and all the crazy images, you know, deers and goats in the middle of cities. And I've loved all that yeah. because it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a dream. It's what we've always you know, it's what we've been all kind of hoping and wanting to happen and work and, and, and to one tiny little particle of virus globally to make it, to bring those planes out of the sky. But I think it put, it, 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 when I say it put a stop to Brexit, I don't mean that in a facile sort of glib manner. I mean, I, I, you know, a year ago, I thought, is this country ever, ever going to heal? You know, the divisions of, you know, leave remain hate the hatred the class you know brexit identity divisions and i think that it has it took a, a global pandemic to do it but i think it, it has it has uh, dug down and and found in people uh, it's, it's 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 released kindness and sympathy empathy and um, and finally i think for me i just feel like Oh, no, just quickly, that I think it's feel as though it's become very clear to me what's important and what's not important. And my people, you know, the, the, the people, the people I love, family, friends, old friends I haven't seen, all sorts of people have come into my mind and I've made contact with them and said, listen, you know, people I haven't seen for 30, old school friends, I don't know, people who are part of my life. And yeah, um, I mean, I've done lots and lots of fundraising and stuff for the charities that I love and support, but also just in my life, just really working harder at at loving people and working harder at kindness and love. Just being better at it, trying to be better at it. Um, They're really, lovely. really lovely answers. Siobhan McSweeney and Juliet Stevenson, thank you so much for coming and joining Amnesty on stage uh, in our recorded video and also tonight live answering the viewers' questions. On Wednesday night at the same time, we will be back here with the goodness gracious me gang and Nish Kumar talking about uh, originally doing that sketch for Amnesty, the history of the sketch, but also recreating it in Edinburgh when Nish Kumar got to live that dream of being in the sketch he saw as a child, which inspired him to do comedy. Um, and thank you so much to people who have already donated tonight. Uh, if you haven't donated, but you can afford to, we would really appreciate it. Anything at all is going to help with human rights at a time when so much funding has been diverted necessarily uh, to the coronavirus. Uh, but also, if you cannot afford to donate, please amplify, share, 
tell someone else who might be able to donate. Um, Friday night, uh, we will be back with uh, uh, the Wembley Arena show. Oh, the cat's just walked on the laptop. I could be here, I could not be here now. I don't know, it might have, might have just all, all exploded. Um, <laughs> Make television now. Uh, it's great if Norton does know better. Watch him. He's the same. Uh, uh, so, uh, so yes, uh, we, we're going to be showing the Wembley Arena show on Friday night. It's an absolute classic, classic secret policeman's ball. We know where you live live. Uh, so tune in for that as well. And tell all your friends about these two events coming up on Wednesday and Friday. And share this one with them because we know they'll want to see it. Thank you so much for supporting Amnesty tonight in watching this. Uh, we hope it's cheered you up in a week of uh, quite horrendous news. And we will keep defending human rights together no matter what happens. Thank you so much, Juliette Chagorn. Thank you to everyone watching. I've been Deborah Thank Fox. you so Good much. Pleasure. Good night. Good night.